Okay, so my copy of the new Dungeons & Dragons starter set, Dragons of Stormwreck Isle, just got here a little bit ago. And I recorded a quick unboxing video to show what actually comes in the box. And yeah, I thought I would do a follow-up video to take a closer look at the adventure book. So, you know, consider, consider there being potential spoilers if you flip through this book so just be aware you know if you want to not have any idea of what's going on then you should not watch this video okay so with that out of the way um, here we obviously have the cover page with the table of contents down on the bottom and here we have our running the adventure the overview of the adventure and I guess uh, I guess we can read a little bit of the overview without really spoiling much. A D&D adventure is a collection of locations, quests, and challenges that inspire you to tell a story. The outcome of that story is determined by the actions and decisions of the adventurers and the luck of the dice. Dragons of Stormwreck Isle draws the characters into the midst of an ancient war among dragons as they explore an island that has long been a battlefield in that conflict. Here's an overview of what you'll find in this booklet. So then the overview overview talks about uh, running the adventure. Uh, the booklet starts with an overview of the adventure. Then it takes a look at the role of the dungeon master in the game of D&D and some tips to help you in this role. Uh, the adventure cites. It says the four chapters of the adventure describe locations on Stormwreck Isle where characters can explore, interact with various creatures, and pursue their goals. The first site, Dragon's Rest, serves as the character's home base during the adventure, where they can rest and get supplies between their visits to the other sites. That's interesting. And then it says, uh, Magic Items and Monsters, two, appendix, two appendices describe rules for magic items and monsters that characters might find in the course of the adventure. And then we have our getting started. Uh, that's pretty short, so I guess I can read over that as well. Uh, to get started, have each player choose one character to play. Five characters printed on separate sheets are included in the box. Tell the players to read over the character sheets, give their characters names, and invent the details of the character's personality and appearance. Encourage the players to write on their character sheets to make these characters their own. I would actually encourage you to not write on, on the sheet, but instead make a photocopy of it or uh, presumably download a PDF of the character sheet and use that instead because the character sheets included in the box are pretty good cardboard stock, uh, or at least you know better than regular paper. So I don't think you want to muck those up by writing on them. So yeah, I would definitely download and print and or go to a store and make a photocopy. Uh, so then we get a little bit about the Forgotten Realms and talks about here the number of players it says in that little block of text it says you can run Dragons of Stormwreck Isle for one to five players so I guess one player would be the uh, you know Dungeon Master plus one player which we saw in Dragons uh, Dragon of Ice Fire Peak as well it says, if you have four or five friends ready to play with you, each person can take one of the characters provided in the box. Five players will find the encounters a little easier than four players, but the adventure works fine as written for groups of four or five players. If you have fewer than four players, you can have some players take on the role of two characters, so the group has at least four characters. A player with two characters should treat one of them as their main character, and the other is a sidekick there to help out but probably not engaging in a lot of dialogue so it's not really one player uh, it's it's uh, it sounds like they want you to have a DM plus four players realistically and if you have just one other human player then they're gonna have to play four characters it sounds like which I don't think sounds very practical so then we have this section on the adventure background. It's a bit long, so I won't go into reading all that. Then we have the adventure outline. Uh, it says, you know, chapter one, Dragon's Rest. This introduces, oh boy, Runara's 
cloister and its inhabitants and provides the characters the opportunity to learn about the problems facing the island. It also describes additional encounters you can use in the course of the adventure, including a magical hot spring with mysterious guardians at the site of a brass dragon's death. Uh, chapter 2, Sea Grow, Sea Grow Caves, describes how the grave of uh, Sharuth spawns magical connections to the elemental plane of fire that threatens a community of mushroom-like myconoids. Chapter 3, Cursed Shipwreck, details a ship that crashed alongside the bones of a gold dragon and the horrible curse within the ship's hold. hold. Chapter 4, Clifftop Observatory, brings the characters to the site where Runara killed a blue dragon and where that blue dragon's grandson has made his lair. There, they'll also find a bronze wormling who rejected Runara's teachings of peace now held prisoner in the Blue Dragon's Lair. And it talks about the adventure maps. And here we get into the role of the Dungeon Master. Um, you know, just your standard tips. I'm assuming, um, you know, for example, it's not a competition. It's not, it's not the DM against the players. Uh, be fair and flexible. You know, pretty, pretty typical stuff. And then it talks about, you know, these blocks. Uh, when you see one of these blocks, that's text that is intended to be read out loud to your players. And then we get into talking about stat blocks, hit points, abilities, uh, story information starts here and kind of goes, goes over to this page as well. Uh, tells you, you know, as, as the dungeon master, you know, you want to keep everybody involved and engaged. Uh, improvising if need be, you're gonna make mistakes, stuff like that. Little map up here, obviously. Let's flip over to the next page. So, this is uh, the beginning of the adventure, presumably. This is chapter one, Dragon's Rest. So, let's actually just take a little bit of a look at this. Again, you know, obviously, these, these this is spoiling the story. So, if you're watching this, it's because you don't care, or perhaps you're the DM. So chapter one, Dragon's Rest, you know, we're just going to look at a little bit here. It says the adventure begins at a tiny cloister called Dragon's Rest, a haven where world-weary people come to seek peace, reconciliation, and enlightenment. There, the characters learn about the dangers facing Stormwreck Isle. Each character has a specific reason for coming to the cloister, as shown on the character sheets. You can also let players invent their own reasons for, for their characters to seek out Renara's wisdom and assistance. And then we get into it. Welcome to Dragon's Rest. And so this would be the first part that you would read out loud to your players. So let's, let's actually take a look at that. So, your journey was uneventful, but the island now visible off the bow promises rare wonders. Seaweed shimmers in countless brilliant colors below you, and rays of sunlight defy the overcast sky to illuminate the lush grass and dark basalt rock of the island. Avoiding the rocks jutting up from the ocean, your ship makes its way toward a calm har harbor on the island's north side. A large open-air temple comes into view, perched on the edge of a cliff high above you. The ship drops anchor at the mouth of the harbor, and two sailors row you ashore. You have plenty of time to admire the towering statue at the center of the temple, depicting a wizened man surrounded by seven songbirds. A long path winds up the side of the cliff to the temple, dotted along the way with doorways cut into the rock. The sailors set you ashore on a rickety dock where a large rowboat is neatly tied. They point to the base of the path and wish you good luck before they row back to the ship. Your visit to Dragon's Rest begins. Dun, dun, dun. And here it just says, basically, uh, this is your introduction. Give your characters a chance to introduce each other to one another. And then we move on over here. Um, ask the players, so get, get the players marching order, that kind of thing. And then when you're, when you're done with all the introductions, then you move down here. 
and um, yeah I'm actually curious let's go ahead and take a look so this is the drowned sailor section and this is what you read to start the encounter it says as you're about to leave the beach and start your climb you hear a ruckus of splashing and a wet gurgling moan behind you three figures are shambling up from the water's edge about 30 feet away they're dressed as sailors but their skin is gray and they look drowned Seawater drools from their slack mouths as they lurch towards you. Okay, and then this uh, is going to be, you know, how do you deal with what's going on here? You know, asking your players what they're going to do in reaction to this information. And then presumably this is how you're going to run this particular section. And then we'll, we'll move down to this section, read this text, and presumably everything after that will be, you know, what is tied to this text block that you would be reading. And then that text block, uh, we then actually, we get into another text block up here, and we have this information here. And then continuing on over here. And then continuing on to here probably be, you know, I'd imagine a while of real playtime before you would get this far. And then we have our first uh, keyed location map. So here's the map. So this is presumably where your players are at when this stuff is going on. And, you know, you have your A1 section, your A2, 3, 4, and 5. Uh, this you would not want to show to your players. I don't know if there is a player version of this map somewhere included, but uh, as an example, when your players arrive at A1, this is the section you would read, a long path leads from the rocky shore up the side of the cliff with occasional stairs to ease the ascent. Here and there along the lower part of the path, well-tended garden plots hold flowers, herbs, and vegetables. About 30 feet above the bay, the path widens into a long plaza. Halfway along the plaza, a stone statue of a dragon gazes serenely down the path. Six open doorways are cut into the side of the cliff. So, yeah, you know, your players might hear that and want to know more about the statue. They might want to know more about those open uh, openings in the cliff side, so you would have some information here. And then, you know, moving on to the winch house, which is over here, and so on, until finally the temple of hmm, Bahamut. And I'm assuming this is probably some sort of a miniature fight, maybe? I'm not sure, like a mini battle, mini boss? I'm not, I'm not sure. I haven't read it. Then we move over here, Cloister Quests. Uh, let's just read this first part here. It says, as the characters explore Dragon's Rest, the residents talk with them about the problems the cloister is facing. These conversations are opportunities for you to introduce the players to the adventure that await them in the sea caves, the shipwreck, and the ancient observatory. So we have the, uh, the sea caves, the shipwreck, these are just different sections, so that's pretty interesting. And then individual quests. So the cleric has an individual quest, the fighter, the paladin, the rogue, the wizard. So individual quests for everybody. Let's, uh, let's just read one of them. Let's read the individual quest for the cleric. Uh, the cleric was led here by a recurring dream involving the shadow of death. If the character talks to Renara about the dreams of the, or their quest... Renara listens closely, then pauses to think. Well, she says, I am no expert on interpreting dreams, but perhaps the zombies you fought are the hunger of death you spoke of. She points the character toward the wreck of Compass Rose to investigate further. And then, you know, you want to see this section here. And then, yeah, so the fighter, like I said, everybody's got like their own little thing going on. So that's pretty cool. And go to the next page here. Exploring the island. Uh, some additional encounters. Uh, it says place these encounters wherever you want. 
on the island or use them as inspiration as you begin to craft your own adventure. So these are some different things that you could uh, sprinkle about as you see fit or use them as the basis of ideas and then change them up a little bit to suit your own desires. So we have like the Hot Springs Havoc. We have There There Owlbear. Uh, Cobalt Renegades. And What Lies Beneath. Let's, let's go to the next page here. Alright, so that'll be the end of chapter one. And then you move over to chapter two the Sea Growl Caves. Uh, let's just read a little bit of this here. So the uh, this chapter assumes the characters come here before going to the wreck of Compass Rose and they are still first level. It also includes simple instructions to scale up the danger in combat, uh, the danger in combat encounters if the characters complete chapter three, cursed shipwreck before coming here and are now second level. So the, the primary way to get here would be assuming they're still first level, but if they have gone somewhere else before getting here, then the the, uh, the guide for the adventure kind of has provisions for that, so you could potentially play it either way. Which is always good, because you don't want your quest to be too linear. Uh, caves Overview. Uh, yeah, we won't read that. It's a bit, it's a bit much. Don't want to make this too long the features of the cave and running the chapter so some of the features include ceilings it says like unless noted otherwise the ceilings are 20 feet high and the tunnels connecting the caverns are 15 feet high information about light information about walls and fumes probably smelly uh, toxic volcanic fumes from deep below the island are slowly poisoning the fungi in the caves and then here's running the adventure. So uh, once the characters decide to visit Sea Grau Caves, they have two options for reaching the site, and they can go by boat or along the coast, and this gives you information how to deal with that. And then if you're approaching at sea level, or if you're approaching from below, so it would decide what you do there. Entering into the cave, inter interacting with the myconoids, uh, I think I'm saying that wrong. Myconids. Let's go on to the next section here. So we have another another map with uh, points. So B1 is that section, B2 is over here, and so on. Kind of look through some of that. A little bit of running the combat for that section. And here's like your suggestion for if the characters are second level, add, uh, essentially add additional monsters to the encounters to make it a little bit more appropriate for their given level. And then that's your B4, section 5, 6. So all these are just how you're going to deal with you know, this map, as your characters are moving around this map, you know, so let's say they end up on section B5, as an example, then that would be, actually, let's go with section B6, just because B6 is easier to pronounce, Crystal Cave. So in, and when you enter into the Crystal Cave, you would have this text that would be read, and it says, uh, the air in this cave is choked with smoke that assaults your nostrils with pungent odors of brimstone strange flickering orange light illuminates the smoke this area is free of fungal growth instead crystals grow from the rock to your right a large cluster of purple crystals juts from the stone on the far wall a glowing orange crystal wedged into a fissure in the cave in the cave wall seems to be the source of the light Streaks of suit trace a path along the cave walls between the purple crystals and the fissure. And then, of course, you have your information here about what's going on with that section. And then finally, ending this chapter, let's take a look at that. 
Uh, if the characters destroy the orange crystals so the toxic fumes can escape the caves, the Myconids' attitude improves to friendly. Uh, sign, let's see, Senesa, Senensa, let's go with Senensa. Senensa, the Myconoid leader, regains consciousness the following morning. If the characters are present when Senensa awakens, Senensa gives them the ruby moral from area B5 and permission to keep any other treasure or mushrooms they collected in the caves. Once the characters return to Dragon's Rest, Tarek can use the ruby moral to make an elixir of health, described in Appendix A, which, which he gives to the characters in gratitude for their efforts. And it says, after they complete this chapter of the adventure, uh, the characters gain a level. If they visited Sea Growl Caves before the wreck of Compass Rose, they advance from first level to second level. The, the residents of Dragon's Urge, of, of Dragon's Rest, urge them to visit the wreck of Compass Rose next. If they've already explored the wreck of the Compass Rose in Chapter 3, they advance from Level 2 to Level 3 and are ready to visit Cliff Top Observatory in Chapter 4. So we have the milestone type of uh, leveling up here instead of experience, which I think is better. I think milestones are better. Um, all right, let's move through this one a little more quickly. So chapter three, Cursed Shipwreck. Again, you got your overview, some additional information here, uh, features, walls, ceilings, doors, that kind of thing, running the chapter, block text. Um, here we have another map, uh, or we have a, the start of a keyed section to the map, which is probably on the next page. Yeah, so C1... It's around here somewhere, I don't actually see it, but each of these sections are going to correlate to this map. So I guess here, you, yeah, you got one ship, and the, these are just the different sections of the deck. So you can take a look at that. I suppose you can pause if you want to look more closely. And skipping over here. It's quite a bit going on on that ship, so you'd probably spend, I'd imagine, one entire session just on that ship, if not two sessions. And then here, ending the chapter. And then once again, you know, depending on what order you do things in, you could potentially gain a level. Uh, but if you've already gained a level, you would not gain another one here, it doesn't sound like. Moving on to chapter four, Clifftop Observatory. Um, by boat along the coast through the land and then here's your map and your sections that correlate to that map D1 with here D2 with this section and so on just like we've seen before I didn't see how many chapters there were, so let's take a look. So chapter four, it looks like this is the, the end of the uh, adventure. Yeah, in fact, it even says it right here, ending the adventure. So I feel like this is a little shorter than Dragon of Ice Spire Peak and quite a bit shorter than Lost Mine of Fandelver. And then here we have our appendix, magic items, appendix A, magic items, boots of elven kind, elixir of health, potions of healing, potion of resistance, spell scroll. Over here you have creatures, and this just explains how the creature stat block works. And then finally you get into your creature descriptions. Here you have your blue dragon, which is the uh, presumably the dragon on the box, or his son. Armor class is 17. Challenge 3, really? 
hit points 52, I would imagine that a dragon would be more difficult than a challenge rating of 3. Maybe this is a baby dragon? <clears throat> Let's see here. Yeah, Wormling, okay, so kind of a baby dragon. I guess it would have to be a bit easier because it's only, what is this, up to level 3, I think? That's it? Just event levels 1 through 3? I guess it doesn't say here. Let me actually take a look at the character sheets really quick. Because usually, like on the back of the sheet, it'll say, you know, do this when you get to level 2, do this when you get to level 3, and so on. So gaining levels. Yeah, it looks like looks like we're only intended to go to uh, up to level 3 here. So I guess that makes sense why this dragon, you know, can't be too much of a challenge. Because you're still quite weak when you get here. And then we have Runara, the adult bronze dragon, bronze dragon wormling, so I guess two versions of that dragon, fire snake, fume drake, the ghoul, harpy, kobold, kobold tinker, winged kobold. Let's see what else we have. Myconid Sprout, Myconid Adult, Sinensa, Albear. I think that's it. A couple more here. Spore Servant Octopus, Sturge, Tarek, Varnoth, and then the back of the book. Violet Fungus, or Violet Fungus and Zombie. Okay, so that is a little bit closer of a look at the adventure and again if you're planning on playing this as a player I hope you haven't made it this far in the video. <laughs>